New footage of a police chase that ended in a neighborhood off College Drive in Baton Rouge with a chase uh, with a crash and officers firing shots. A suspect in that case suffered minor injuries, we're told, and it turns out he was on probation in connection to another police chase. Louisiana police, state police say they are investigating this, of course, and released the dash camera footage and the body camera footage showing what happened in an effort they say to be transparent. And it all started with a traffic stop. Yeah. Um, 33 year old Tyler Pugh was going 15 miles per hour over the speed limit on Chippewa Street, mm -hmm. which, you know, sounds routine, right? But then things took a turn. Ooh. Yeah. Pugh stopped initially, like he was going to cooperate. But then, and this is where it gets interesting, okay. he just bolts. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it went from like a routine traffic stop to like yeah. not your average traffic stop anymore. Right. Um, and so this kicked off a chase. That went on to the interstate. Uh, speeds hit almost 100 miles an hour. Pew's SUV was weaving in and out of traffic, uh, even going through residential neighborhoods. It's all there on the footage. Wow. That's, I mean, that's a major red flag for a lot of experts. Huh. You know, they argue that high-speed pursuits pose such a huge risk, not just to the officers and the suspect, but to anyone who happens to be nearby. Yeah, you just never know. Like somebody could be, Rice. you know, walking their dog, taking mm. their trash out, whatever. Absolutely. Um, the chase finally ended when Pew crashed into a utility pole off College Drive, but it didn't end there. Oh. So this is where it gets even more interesting. Police say Pew then tried to run over an officer, and the officer fired shots at the SUV. Oh, wow. Pew ended up with minor injuries, but his passenger was seriously hurt. So this whole thing from the initial speeding to the crash and the shooting, it really raised some concerns for a police pursuit expert, Thomas Gleason, when he reviewed the footage. And, you know, I think his perspective is important here because he's not just watching the events unfold. He's actually questioning whether that initial speeding violation justified such a risky chase, especially when it went through residential areas. Yeah, that makes sense. Like when you, when you think about you know, the risk versus reward. Mm -hmm. Was it worth it? Potentially putting innocent lives at risk. I mean, right. And that's what I was thinking too. It's like, sure, catching someone speeding is important. Right. But is it worth putting, you know, somebody's life at risk because they happen to be walking by at that moment? Yeah. It's, uh, it's tough because you know, we're looking at this in hindsight. Right. Like in the heat of the moment, things might look very different. Yeah. To that officer. You know, we have to remember, they're making split-second decisions mm. under immense pressure. Yeah. And, you know, it's easy for us to sit back and be like... Armchair quarterback. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, they should have done this or they should have done that. But when you're there, you don't have time to think. Um, but there's actually more to this case. It's not as straightforward as it might seem at first. Um, Pew's background adds a whole nother layer to the story. Okay. Yeah. So Tyler Pugh was wearing an angle monitor at the time of this chase, one connected to a shooting case. Wow. And he was already on probation for a drug conviction that stemmed from a previous police chase. Hold on. So he had a previous chase. Yes. Okay. That definitely changes things. Yeah. I mean, was the officer even aware of Pew's history during the pursuit? Yeah. That's kind of a critical piece of information. Yeah. You know, would knowing about his past influence the officer's decisions? Yeah. And I think that's a great question that we need to kind of keep in mind as we go through all of this. But now we've got another viewpoint to consider. District Attorney Hiller Moore actually believes that the officers made the right call in chasing Pew. Okay. So he's arguing that the officers had everything under control and that the pursuit was justified because of Pew's previous offenses. Okay, so his perspective is important too because it shows that there are multiple viewpoints uh, on this situation, which is important for any investigation. Yeah, and it makes you wonder, you know, like if he had not had that history, right? if it would played out differently. Maybe. Exactly. Yeah. But anyway, more saying, you know, his past actions made him a potential threat and they needed to stop him. But, you know, this seems to kind of clash with Gleason's concerns about the chase escalating the danger unnecessarily. Yeah. It really highlights that tension. Yeah. You know, between public safety and the potential risks yeah. of a high speed chase. It's like there's no easy answer. And that's what makes this case so interesting. Right. And that's kind of what we do here on the deep dive. We're not picking sides. You no. know, we're laying out the different perspectives. Moore's, Gleason's, what we see in the footage. You, the listener, get to weigh it all and form your own conclusions. Right. It's like we're piecing together a puzzle, you know, so. looking at each piece of information and seeing how it all fits together to create the bigger picture. 
And just so you know, the officer involved in the shooting has been cleared to return to work. Um, and if you are interested in seeing the full video of this chase for yourself, you can find it on the Nine News app. It's always good to look at the source material when you can. Yeah. You know, that way you can form your own opinions yeah. rather than just relying on what other people say. Absolutely. And, you know, bef before we move on, I think it's also important to just note that the fact that we even have this footage is a big deal. We're able to have this discussion because of dash cams and body cams. Oh, for sure. That kind of transparency yeah. is crucial for holding law enforcement accountable and for building trust with the community. Yeah. So, OK, we've seen the chase. The crash, the shooting, we've heard from both Gleason and Moore. And we even, you know, touched on the bigger issue of police chases and public safety. But there's still so much more to unpack here. And, you know, this chase in Baton Rouge might seem far away for some of you, but these issues, they come up everywhere. Public safety, police conduct, the balance between individual rights and keeping everyone safe. I mean, these are universal concerns. Yeah, absolutely. And this is just the beginning of our exploration. You know, yeah. we're going to dig deeper into all of this and hopefully you'll come away with a better understanding of the complexities of police work, yeah. the potential for, you know, both good and bad outcomes and how important it is to have these conversations, open and honest conversations about improving public safety while still respecting everyone's rights.